Can you talk a bit about how you came to know President Clinton? You talk about it in the book, but I, mean, I think people sure. would probably just like to learn a little bit more about that because that seems like a, a pretty interesting relationship for current federal leader to have with a former U.S. president. Yes. Well, he, uh, of course, when I met him, he wasn't, uh, yeah. he, he, was in, he was a Yale Law School student. Mm -hmm. So I was born in the States. My, and this is a big theme in, the, in my early years and talk about in the book, my mother's activism. And she was very involved through my whole life in numerous campaigns, leading to being involved in anything to try to stop the war in Vietnam. So she became involved in supporting candidates who wanted to end the war in Vietnam, which led her to work for Eugene McCarthy in 1968. And in 1971, in the summer of 1971, Bill Clinton, a young Yale law student, made an appointment to come meet with us, knocked on the door, us, my mom, he wanted to meet my mom because she was a very effective organizer and Senator George McGovern was putting together his campaign team and they were asking my mom if she would volunteer and work in the McGovern for President campaign. So, I mean, I, I don't mind telling you, I don't quite describe it like this in the book, I don't think, but I was 17 years old, I opened the front door, my knees caved, and I think, <laughs> oh my God, this beautiful, anyway, never mind, Bill at law school was quite something, and I was <laughs> making iced tea and bringing it to the back porch for my mom and Bill, and he was really, really wonderful to me always, he treated me like an older brother, he was thoughtful and kind, and immediately, because he could see I had a pretty serious crush, I heard all about Hillary Rodham, this incredibly brilliant Yale Law student who was his girlfriend and I even got to like her too which took some doing. Anyway we became friends and stayed friends and then my family moved to Cape Breton Island and opened a restaurant and gift shop and we became really quite, um, well as my father said we're not bankrupt we really have a liquidity problem. We couldn't afford groceries, but we did have a lot of inventory. So over the winters, we had tartans and kilts and a physical plant, but we couldn't, you know, deal, you know, couldn't to convert that to cash. Uh, so I didn't go to university. Uh, I stayed waitressing and cooking in my family's restaurant. And one day, a bus tour, I was waiting on these lovely people, and they had this soft southern accent that really reminded me of Bill's accent. So I said to them, "By any chance, are you folks from Arkansas?" And they said, well, yes, we are. Now, how do you all know that? And I said, well, I had a crush, a really bad crush on a guy from Arkansas once. They said, well, who was that? And I said, well, his name was Bill Clinton. They said, ah, governor? <laughs> and they're all looking <laughs> around anyway. So that's how we reconnected. We lost track of each other between Connecticut when I left when I was 18, 19. And then the bus tour, the bus driver, ran into Bill on the streets of Little Rock when they got home and said, we ran into some people, know y'all, up in Canada somewhere. So... Bill sent the bus driver with a package of things for us. And at, after that, he would invite my mom to every inauguration. We got back to being in touch and friends. And then he wasn't governor for a while. And then he was again. And then he ran for president. So we, we've, we are against all odds. I, you know, I'm, I'm federal party leader of the Green Party of Canada. And one of my Longtime friends is the former president of the United States. Yeah. He's just as, as, as kind and thoughtful and caring as he could possibly be. Can you tell a story of uh, the climate conference uh, at the end of 2005, yeah. chaired by Stéphane Dion, during an election? You write quite a bit about an, an anecdote involving the president, <laughs> former president, uh, and, and your attempts uh, to get him to, to come to the, to the climate summit and speak. Yeah, this was, of course, when Canada hosted the world yeah. uh, Montreal is was uh, COP 11 which is the 11th conference of the parties and my job like we all within the environmental movement we're, we're particularly at that time we were really really effective at splitting up duties and thinking, okay we've got this huge opportunity the, the first time ever on North American soil we have a climate negotiation we can get the US media interested in climate how do we do that so that became my my job as executive director at the time of Sierra Club of Canada. So I was trying to recruit John, Dale, John Stewart to do the Daily Show from Ottawa. I was trying to get, I tried, I wrote, I wrote Bill Clinton, didn't get an answer, wrote Al Gore, he said he wasn't going to come. I'm trying to get basically an attraction happening besides UN climate negotiations to get the US media to pay attention. And we were already in Montreal. Things were already going pretty badly when suddenly the White House was in touch because they'd also had an invitation from the mayor of Montreal, 
uh, that Gerald Tremblay was willing to host a session with Bill Clinton, but Bill had this invitation from me, so can you put it together? Can you get, and then I found out that you can't just send the President of the United States, the former President, a ticket. You have to hire and charter private planes. So there I was in sort of the back little, you know, overcrowded uh, environmental group area where we were all trying to get to a phone and it was noisy and crazy and chaotic. And I'm trying to negotiate with charter air companies to get the planes. And then I find out I need to put down $10,000 right away. So I phoned uh, one of my most wonderful friends, the late Glenn Davis from Toronto, who was a philanthropist who supported environmental groups. And I said, Glenn, I kind of need to borrow your visa card. Can, you, can your visa card handle $10,000? And can I borrow it? Because I need this money in the next half hour, right? So, <laughs> so anyway, it all happened. And on the very last day of negotiations, when things would either have been all wrapped up or hanging in the breach, Bill Clinton was going to speak. And it turned out to be the latter. Things were hanging in the breach. The U.S. was not agreeing. This was the U.S. under George Bush. Stéphane Dion was doing an incredibly good job trying to pull things together. And Bill Clinton's speech ended up being the thing that made the U.S. drop its objections because it was so skillful. It was just masterful. So anyway, that's the story. And then, and then, I, and then while he was speaking, I was standing with his, uh, his handler people who came with him. And I said, you know that visit I'm supposed to have with him later privately? They said, yeah. I said, can I bring some friends? It hadn't occurred to me before. They said, sure. How many friends do you want to bring? I said, 50. I thought fast. And then I worked through the room and sent people texts, and we rounded up most of the Canadian youth activists, most of the uh, volunteers who'd worked on climate with me for many years. And there's a picture in the book of all of us together, this squashed yeah. group. And I didn't put this in the book, Nick, but the, the thing that was really, really sweet was it was Bill who said, let's get a picture of all of us together. And he turned to me and he said, Stephanie, you get them all rounded up. And then I, and he looked at me and said, oh, I always do that. I always call her her mother's name. <laughs>